day. Uh, it's uh, come up to 6.31. Um, I'm going to start by saying welcome to everybody who's joined us. Uh, we had just over 100 uh, registrants for this evening's uh, webinar. So thanks for those of you who are here right now and um, eager to hear um, any information we can share about Gainesville High School. Um, a few reminders tonight, uh, a little bit of information about the upcoming uh, course selection process for the for the following school year, the 23-4 school year. Um, and uh, our plan is to be uh, through the webinar in 30 or so minutes. Um, very quickly, I want to introduce the the, the people who are in the, the, the room with me. Uh, I'm going to start with Mrs. Brand. She has a role tonight. Uh, Mrs. Pomfret, our school uh, director of school counseling. Uh, Mrs. Manival is one of our assistant principals. Mrs. Yearwood, one of our assistant principals. Mr. Barton, assistant principal. Dr. Scott is our Pathways Program Coordinator. And Mr. Daniels is our uh, administrative intern uh, at Gainesville High School. Uh, a couple of reminders for you. The chat feature has been disabled. Um, however, if you look at the bottom of your Zoom screen, um, there is a, a Q&A button. Uh, if you hit the Q&A button, we are tracking the questions that come in and we'll, we'll do the best uh, we can between us to respond to any questions that crop up during the course of the evening. As far as the agenda is concerned, we've, we've got through introductions. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, move into a little bit of information from our PTSO, some reminders, attendance. The, the big ticket item is academic advising for the coming year. Uh, information about our seniors, our first graduating class, and then um, a little bit about athletics and then upcoming activities and events. So that's that's the big picture. And uh, if we move to the next slide, I'm going to pass you over to Mrs. Branch, who's going to talk about our, um, our dedicated piece, PTSO membership. Hello, everybody. My name is Tamika Branch. I'm the president for the PTSO here at Gainesville High School. Um, I'm not going to bore you and read our mission statement line by line, but the whole idea of the PTSO is to foster a great relationship between the parents, the teachers, and the students, and creating a good uh, environment, enhancing um, and encouraging the educational and social environment in our Cardinal community. So we have um, a couple of initiatives for the 2022-23 um, school year. Um, those are all listed and can also be found on our website at the bottom. The main one that I want to focus on is our No Frills fundraiser. Uh, we have launched the No Frills fundraiser, um, and those funds are going to help us to do certain things that are listed on that site, um, like staff appreciations. We want to begin micro grants for the teachers. Um, we also need to complete our 501c3. Um, so we are launching our No Frills fundraiser. It's active and available on our Gainesville High School PTSO website, uh, which is listed below. Um, we also need board members. Um, it's just myself and the secretary. So if anyone is interested in joining as well. Um, and our very first meeting for the year will be January 25th um, in the school library. And we look forward to seeing you all there. But Always check out our website to get the latest news, as well as if you want to donate to our No Frills fundraiser. Thank you, Mrs. Branch. I'm, I'm going to stress the, the benefit that a strong PTSO has for our school. Um, you can see the, the work that our PTSO has done and hopes to do um, culturally um, and uh, uh, and literally in terms of the support we can offer faculty, staff and students, uh, uh, an active PTSO participation is, is important for, for a big high school like Gainesville High School. Uh, moving on from there, we'll talk about our activity boosters. The, the Cardinal activity boosters are um, up and running and, and very active. Um, Mrs. Bell and Mrs. Slaughter are, are, I think, tied up at a competing uh, meeting this evening. Sorry for, for having both of these events going on. The simple message that, that they wanted to share was there's a lot of information on their web page. I think we're going to drop the URL for our um, activities boosters in the chat feature so you can click on that link and uh, find ways to get involved. But again, every dollar that our booster organization raises to support students across activities and athletics 
is um, um, is helpful in terms of um, dollars that we don't have to find from anywhere else in our budget um, to support academics. Um, I think somewhere we've got we have a we have a guest here. Okay, Mrs. Slaughter, I'm going to try to make you a co-host and see. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you joined us. See if you're able to turn your camera on and do a better job than I'm doing in explaining your mission. Hello, yes, can you guys hear me? Um, so my name is Ms. Slaughter. I have a slide, my apologies. I didn't get it sent out to you guys ahead of time. Um, but the big updates I wanted to give for boosters is that so this year um, we have officially started our fundraising planning for 2023. So there are a couple emails and things that should be coming out for people who are interested in helping us with fundraising. Uh, we are actively looking for people to support our concession for our spring and the end of our winter sports. And so that we ask that you guys start looking for that. And then as an update is um, just a reminder that Activity Boosters does not only support our sports, but also sports activities. So we have recently approved not only supporting um, our baseball and softball program, we recently bought a spring um, board for our gymnastics team and are going to actually be covering registration fees for our esports team. And anybody interested in learning more about Boosters, um, I invite you to please check out our website, send an email over to Activity Boosters, and we are happy um, to share more information with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Slaughter. Thanks for making it to the meeting tonight. I appreciate you sharing that information. Uh, again, um, participants in the, the webinar, if you go to the chat, um, there is a link to our booster uh, webpage there. Okay, moving on. Um, you know, the, 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 the mission of, of the work that we do at Gainesville High School is providing an outstanding education for our students in a self and safe environment. But um, unless we take care of some of the, the the um, the less attractive details, if you will, then we, we don't get to do that work as well as we otherwise would. So some reminders, traffic flow, um, there is no relief for the, for the traffic flow in a morning or an afternoon. Our campus design obviously creates some challenges and the volume of parent drop-off um, means that um, we have to do the best we can to keep traffic flowing onto and off campus for drop-off in the morning. Um, Volume starts to pick up around 7, 10. Um, obviously, the simple advice is try to get there early. Students try to be ready to hop out of the car as quickly as you can once, uh, once you reach the drop-off zone. Um, we are exploring two or three variables in traffic flow on campus to try and alleviate or, or increase the speed with which uh, we, can, we can help families move through the drop-off line. One of them is going to be that we cone off at right around that 7:10 time frame when things start to get busy. We're going to cone off the first entrance, the left turn entrance onto uh, school grounds close to the bus loop. So starting on Tuesday, there'll be um, the first entrance will be coned off. So everybody is going to have to drive the length of uh, University Boulevard to the marquee, turn left onto campus, and then and then follow the traffic pattern from there. The big idea is left turn traffic onto campus um, slows traffic, both um, driving along University Boulevard to, to get to the school and, and traffic leaving on University Boulevard away from school. So if we avoid left turns onto campus across traffic lanes, uh, we're hoping it's gonna increase the flow of traffic or improve the flow of traffic. So we're gonna try that on Tuesday. It may be a small benefit, um, we'll see what happens. If it causes absolute chaos, obviously we can uh, we can revert back to the old traffic pattern. But that's coming up on Tuesday. Um, the other thing that we're we're asking for support from our community is um, to avoid food deliveries from uh, DoorDash, Uber Eats, or anyone else. Um, we take security, safety, and sorry, safety and security seriously. And our goal is for students not to visit external doors of the building open them for some stranger to deliver food or to have the food delivered to the main office, which takes staff away from their other roles. So parents, if you wish to drop food off for your child during the day, we're, we're certainly supportive of you um, doing nice things for your children, but um, we're trying to avoid um, Uber Eats showing up to some unnamed door at the back of the building and delivering food to, to students. So anything you can do to help us with that message, we appreciate. 
Um, one other um, area of focus, um, I'm going to set the stage for and then pass off the, the mic to Mr. Daniels, is attendance. Um, one of the, the effects of the pandemic or one of the phenomena post-pandemic is that attendance rates um, in schools across the nation, across Prince William County schools, are elevated over what we would historically have experienced. So today, 20% um, of our students, over 400 students at Gainesville High School, are considered to be chronically absent. That means they've missed 10% of the school year or more. Um, now, the, the caveat to that is there's been more illness in the fall than I have experienced as an educator in recent history. The, the rates of incidence of flu, RSV, COVID, unknown, unspecified illnesses have been really prevalent. So we recognize that. Um, I'm simply stressing to our community, do whatever you can to have students attend school, please, if there's a way of avoiding family trips or medical appointments or those kinds of things that happen during the school day. We appreciate it um, for all the right reasons, trying to get students to school to, to benefit their academic progress and their, uh, their connection with, uh, with the school is, um, is the goal. Um, our, our hope is that over time, um, the chronic absentee rate at Gainesville High School drops. Um, and what else, what I'll also share is our attendance rate at Gainesville comparatively is, is positive to other schools in the Northern Virginia area. Um, it's just higher than we would have ex expected at this time of year. So uh, parents, anything you can do to, to help with good attendance, we appreciate while recognizing if students are sick or running a fever, obviously the best place for them is not in a school building. Um, at this time, I'll pass the mic over to Mr. Daniels just to go through some of the logistical details of attendance. Yes, thank you very much. And as Mr. Beach said, um, the attendance is we're focusing on that. So if you can use these three different ways uh, to help uh, tar uh, if you do need to have an absence to help target the uh, absences and kind of get them in the system. Um, for excused absences, if your student's going to be out all day, use Parent View to report. Uh, that all day excused absence. Um, if you're going to have an early dismissal, use the link. Uh, Ms. Yearwood has posted that over in the chat area. Um, if you can use that link, um, that way we can have a pass ready for your student uh, for when they come in. They can come and meet you downstairs right when they're supposed to uh, once we get the pass approved. Uh, and then in a late arrival, uh, in all cases, uh, all students need to check in through the main desk, um, the front desk, uh, and that, that, and then they'll enter their ID and uh, they'll get a pass to go to class from there. Um, and so, and if you're coming in late, uh, please bring a note for uh, with you uh, at that time. Um, and if not, it needs to be turned in three days uh, after the uh, absence. So that way we can kind of process that. All right, thank you. Okay, I'm going to pass the mic over to Dr. Scott just to give a little bit of an update on our specialty program, the Pathways program, as we continue to build uh, capacity and interest in supporting our students in this area of our work. Uh, good evening, folks. Thanks for coming out tonight. It's, uh, it's nice to have everybody here. Uh, just uh, in the interest of brevity, I, we're, we're excited to have the opportunity this year to expand on our efforts with the Pathways program. Um, and, and rather than give a lot of details about the program tonight, I'd like to invite you to, uh, we've got an information session planned for next Thursday, January 19th at seven o'clock in the auditorium. If you're, you have questions about Pathways, you're, I mean, you're always welcome to email or, or to, to call me. But if you, can, if you can make it next Thursday night at seven, uh, Pathways information night in the auditorium. Um, we, we will have, we've got five students from various pathways on hand to kind of share their experiences and their guidance for, for younger students or rising, uh, rising ninth graders, uh, teachers, a counselor, a uh, gifted education teacher, some administrators there. So it's a, it's a good opportunity to have your questions uh, answered and to learn a little bit more about the, uh, about the program. In the next month or so, we're really spent putting most of our um, efforts into kind of targeting current 10th graders. Um, we'll share some information prior to registration. Um, in the classrooms and then and then digitally with current 10th graders, current ninth graders as well. Uh, the next conversation that you have with your counselor is key. As for 10th graders, we look at what your pathway might be for the next two years and ninth graders as we begin 
to take a longer view on your schedule based on the experiences that you've had so far uh, as, as a Gainesville student. Ninth graders, if you have questions, um, certainly stop and see your counselor, come and see me. Um, we're especially interested in, like I said, that next conversation you're about to have with your counselor about questions for classes for next year. Um, those, are, those are important. If you're an 11th grader, and you are interested in pathways or you have an idea for an extended learning experience, please come and find me. Um, I'm in the cafeteria most days, or you can come and find me in my, my office near the extended, extended learning um, space. Um, ninth graders, last thing, ninth graders, uh, again, to, just to reiterate, think about the electives that you've had so far, the experiences that you've had with the electives, if that feels like a good fit for you. Um, Talk with your counselor about that when it comes time for for registration, um, and that's it. Uh, but again, if you're if you're available next Thursday night at seven o'clock in the auditorium. Um, I'm just going to remind everybody again: if if you have questions, the Q and A uh, feature is down at the bottom of the Zoom screen. Uh, we surveyed the community to see if there were topics that you wanted us to cover. So the, the responses we've had, we've tried to cover here, but if you have other questions, we'll do the best we can to uh, to answer them as we go. All right. Um, some of the, the business end of the, the, uh, the webinar tonight is Mrs. Pomfret. Thank you. Um, again, my name is Megan Pomford. I'm the Director of Counseling here at Gainesville. Just some reminders, the end of second marking period in first semester is quickly approaching. Um, the last day for the second marking period first semester is January 27th. So please work with your student and teachers to ensure you know they're getting their work in on time. If you have questions, please reach out to your teachers. Um, they can answer specifics. Um, there is a teacher work day on January 30th, so your student has no school that day, um, so please make sure you're marking that on your calendar. Um, if, as you're trying to track your student grades, parent view is your friend, um, so you can utilize the app, but we also really encourage you to use a computer-based version of the program. There's a lot more information that teachers are, are housing in parent view that can't be viewed on the application on your phone. Um, so please utilize um, the computer version as well. If your student needs help, obviously reach out to their teachers. Um, Prince William County also has real to, um, access to a couple of programs that I encourage you to use. The first is the paper online tutorial. It's a really fantastic way for your student to get help 24 seven. It's free. Um, there's a chat function. They're working with teachers. I've even heard some of them are Prince William County teachers. Um, so it's a great way for them to get help. Um, if you, know, if you don't know how to help your student with some math, which would be my issue, I would utilize pa um, paper to help process questions with my student. Um, and also you can utilize Khan Academy. Khan Academy is phenomenal all the way from K um, from kindergarten all the way up into college. Um, students should have a Khan Academy account. Um, not only is it great for tutoring and for practicing concepts, um, for, but for our students who've taken the PSAT, it also has free personalized SAT preparation. Really, really good free, 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 free SAT preparation. So I can't stress using Khan Academy enough. It's very, very good. And I believe we've been dropping those links in the chat for you. All right, so academic advising. Um, we have been planning for academic advising to start for the 23-24 school year. We start those conversations as early as October. Um, and there's a lot of moving parts with this. And I published a little bit of information out to the community, um, but wanted to um, remind everybody kind of what things are gonna happen. So at the end of January, starting on January 26th, the school counselors do one-on-one -on -one meetings. We start with the rising seniors through the US and Virginia history class. Um, so we get we start with the seniors and then we go to the rising ninth graders. We go to the feeder middle schools, um, work with those students, and then we come back and then do the rising 11th and the rising 10th graders. There is a, a schedule that is on our counseling canvas page. And there's a button that looks just like this red image here, this academic advising 2324 button that everything I'm saying and a lot more is housed there. So please visit that with your student. Take a look, there's a module that's um, got a four, four pages on it um, that we're, and I'm adding a few more things in the coming days to help you and your student make decisions. 
Um, again, every student gets a one on one meeting with their school counselor. And if I can please ask, we, we cannot wait to see your kids, um, but we ask, please don't have them start scheduling appointments now to do academic advising. We will see them through their classes. We are very excited to, to have these conversations with them. Um, but if we're doing three, four, five, six sessions with kids, um, it keeps us away from getting through everybody and we wanna see every kid. We wanna have meaningful conversations with your students. Um, as a family, you can use things like parent and student view. If you go into parent view and you click course history, you can see where you, your student is with their graduation requirements. And I highly recommend that you look at that. Um, you can also print an unofficial transcript from your student at any point. You can get in there and take a look. Um, always consider graduation requirements. Your school counselor will review those with your students. Um, but take a look at them, you know, help, help your child understand what's required of them. Um, a, the counselor will give them a paper copy of their transcript, but you all can be reviewing that at any point as well. Um, looking at teacher recommendations, um, teachers are meeting with students right now. They're doing one-on-one -on -one meetings um, to talk about the students' interests and their progression next school year. Um, so consider those recommendations um, as you're thinking about choices with your child. And also their, their interests. What are they interested in? Um, we want to see them challenge themselves. And, and the quote that I like to use is, I want to see you push yourself, just like not off a cliff. So please ensure that you're considering course load, right? Um, you don't need to take every AP class that's ever been offered to get accepted into college. We know that access to one AP class and just trying it out um, really helps prepare a student to be ready for college. They don't need to take seven. Um, there is no prescription or recipe that colleges are looking for. So please consider balance. And also please understand the logistics of once the school year starts and we build this master schedule built on students' um, course requests, that making changes during the school year might not be possible. I might not have seats to give your student. We, build, we take the requests and we hire staff and schedule rooms. Um, so we really ask for some thoughtful conversations between you and your student on their choices. And please help them understand that, you know, challenge is good, challenge is important. Let's focus on the areas that you love and maybe scale back in other areas so that you have time for clubs and activity activities or some volunteering in the community. Um, also, we have some new classes that we're offering that we're excited about, including um, Biology 2, it's an introduction to DNA course. Um, we're adding another course to our Project Lead the Way in medical interventions, adding sociology, adding an introduction to culinary class. We have some exciting things, and I have published our course request form on this counseling canvas, this academic advising module, so go check it out. Um, we always get questions about dual enrollment. Dual enrollment, as we're building capacity at Gainesville High School and we're adding new classes, dual enrollment is something that we're always considering. We're not offering it for 23-24 as we're building capacity um, and as we're building out our advanced coursework. But I, um, and Mr. Beach, I don't know if you want to add anything about dual enrollment, um, but it's, it's something in the future that I would imagine will be there, but it might not be, you know, next school year or the school year after that. Yeah, the, the only thing I would add is that it's it's a prominent part of our planning conversations at the minute. It's not as simple as saying we want to add dual enrollment and it happening. Um, we have to have endorsed staff. Um, uh, in other words, staff who are eligible to teach at the community college level based on their own academic uh, backgrounds. Um, and as as we grow, if you consider we're, we're not at capacity in our junior and senior classes right now, um, um, we'd be layering additional um, coursework that, that is um, not always the most prevalently selected course on top of an AP or other uh, advanced coursework. And sometimes you just can't do both based on the amount of student interest. So um, it's, we, we've had some serious conversations about dual enrollment and how strategically we can add it to our scheduling for uh, future years based on both staffing and student need. Um, we'll take one more year to really evaluate where we have the capacity to do that, and then we'll we'll start to layer it over the top of the existing coursework a year from now. Thank you, Mr. Beach. Um, and one thing that I failed to add, um, thinking about our new courses, 
for next school year or any of our courses um, really besides core courses, student interest drives whether classes are actually run. So just because we offer something on the course request form doesn't mean that it necessarily will 100% occur. If I have two students signed up for an elective, um, budgetarily it, do it doesn't make sense for us to run that class. So please be advised that that, that may happen um, where we may not be able to run all of our classes. And I'll do my best to communicate those things with students as things are closed. Um, a deadline to get on your on your calendar um, is the last day for students as they've gone from January through March. We'll do some cleanup through the whole time and into April, but the last day that students can make course request changes is May 5th. Um, there is a change request form in that counseling canvas page. So again, I've invited all of our students, um, some of it, I've got a handful that haven't accepted the invitation. If your child does not have an invitation, please reach out to their school counselor so we can get them added. Um, but the form that they would enter their course request changes is in the Canvas page. Um, I've already mentioned some of the things that are in parent and student view. Once your student meets with their school counselor and we input their course requests into our system, you will be able to see them in parent and student view at any time. So let's say um, your child's met with their counselor. We've got seven requests and two backups in there. A week later, you all decide to make a change. You've submitted the course request form. Give us a couple of days, um, but you can check in parent and student view to see once that change has been um, once that change has been made. I will send out two large communications to the the community right before spring break. And at the end of April, just reminding you, I need you to confirm, please double check, please talk with your student to ensure their requests are the same. Um, and then um, something to share, if you have anybody who has a, a rising ninth grade, grade or coming to Gainesville, um, I have sent all of those students an invitation to a class of 2027 Canvas page. I shared this on our social media but and, I, and with the local middle schools, but if you know anybody, please share this with them as well. We will have a rising family, rising ninth grade family webinar on January 24th. Um, and then we will have an in-person um, new student open house on April 27th, as well as orientation in August. Um, and then going from ninth grade to my seniors, the class of 2023. Um, so we have, there are things called mid-year transcripts. So when, when a student requests a transcript, we send the initial transcript, which up to this point is everything that they've completed up until the end of their junior year. Um, so when a student requests um, through Naviance, when they've actually submitted the request through Naviance, and counselors and our college and career counselor, Ms. Harris and Ms. McCuller, our admin assistant, have been working with students to get these requests out. These have been sent at semester, as long as a senior has request done an initial request, we will automatically send their mid-years, automatically send their mid-years, which includes um, up to their junior year, their first semester grades, and their updated um, GPA and percentile, their projected GPA and percentile. And then once they graduate, we send one final transcript to the school that they've indicated through their senior survey. Um, I really encourage you, you know, we, we are very, we're working with students to update their grades, but we really want to make sure those first semester grades are accurate. So I know teachers can go back and make adjustments, um, but with working with your seniors, make sure that semester grade is what you want schools seeing. I know you can fix it third, third marking period, but once it's sent at semester, and we typically get them ready to go and updated with all the processes we have to run around February 13th, um, it, we send it and, and that it's sent from that point on. We can send updated transcripts as needed. Um, however, we, we really want to make sure that that mid-year is accurate. So make sure your student, if they've got any grades they're concerned about, that they're working with their teachers, that their semester grade is accurate. If you have a student that's applying to NOVA, um, we'd love for them to do their request, but we only send a final transcript at the end of the year. So they can do their request now, so it's locked and loaded. Um, but they don't necessarily need to do an initial and mid-year and a final. NOVA just requests their final transcript. And that's the same for Laurel Ridge as well. Um, if you get communication from colleges at the end of January saying we need those first semester grades, um, we will not have them ready till mid-February. I promise you we will send them and colleges will still accept them. This is not a Gainesville High School rule. This is a county rule. And every year there's always one or two colleges that 
kind of upset parents because they're sending out these things saying we need the grades right now, but colleges know that our grades are not ready until about mid-February, and I promise you we will get them out as quickly and as accurately as possible um, so that your students' colleges can make their decisions if they need to. And that was a lot of me talking, so I'm going to mute myself, and I'm going to uh, hand it over to Ms. Yearwood. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly put the Jostens website in the chat. Um, so our graduation is June 13th at 7 p.m. at Eagle Bank Korea um, at the George Mason campus in Fairfax. In the uh, survey that we sent out, we had a few parents ask about, is there a minimum ticket requirement that um, you know I can only bring so many family members? And that is not the case at Eagle, Eagle Bank. So for your planning purposes, you can have that. Um, also, for senior parents, you can purchase your cap and gown. I put the Jostens website in um, in the chat, and you would go to the Gainesville High School, go to your school's page, go to graduation. Um, it's $45 right now until about January 15th. If you see that gray stole, um, that is a customized stole that we're going to have as a part of our cap and gown. And because it's customized, we want to make sure that we have orders in early so that we can have that ready for your kids um, I think we have about 137 students who've already purchased their cap and gown, so about halfway there. Um, so please just remember to try and get that done as soon as possible. Um, after January 15th, that price may go up. I'm not sure how much. We'll contact our rep just to get that information, and we'll send it out for you. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll reiterate the need for any of our parents of seniors, or if you know of a parent of a senior, please make sure you go to Jostens. I, I'd hate for people to overpay uh, for caps and gowns. Graduation has all sorts of other um, trappings that can make it a, an expensive experience for a family. So um, thanks for staying ahead of that. We had a, a group of uh, students, our senior class had a town hall this afternoon and um, it's a really positive conversation. Our, our senior class officers have done a really nice job um, putting some things together for the second semester for the senior class, but they were excited to talk about uh, some of the traditions and, and the sequence of events that, that'll occur during um, their graduation ceremony, the first class, uh, first graduating class of, uh, of Gainesville High School. Okay, we'll move on to athletics and activities. Uh, the the GainesvilleCardinals.com website is the one-stop shop for athletics and activities. Um, it has the list of coaching staff um, that we that we have at Gainesville right now. Um, spring sport registration is is it's early to register, but um, athletes can register for for spring sports, um, including medical documentation if uh, if that needs to be renewed because an athlete hasn't participated earlier in this school year clubs and activities, physical and concussion training, et cetera. Um, I'll take a moment to, to recognize the, the work that our student athletes are doing and our coaching staff um, putting hundreds of hours of time in and dedication into uh, practice, games, travel, representing our school. Um, it's been a fun season. We've had a lot of um, success, growth, both in participation and, and performance uh, among the student athletes um the that attend Gainesville High School so thank you if you're part of that uh there was an exciting basketball game last night that several uh Gainesville staff attended I was at a wrestling meet uh last week um several of us are going to a gymnastics meet I think at Patriot High School as soon as we get off uh off this webinar so thank you student athletes and parents and our coaching staff for all the work you're doing Likewise, for our clubs, the, the number of student clubs and the participation in student clubs at Gainesville is, is very much on the uptick. And it's kind of neat to see how many students are engaged in fun and interesting things um, after the school day ends. So thanks, everybody, for everything you're doing to support that. Um, some upcoming uh, events. This is the, the, the schedule for the next few days. It's certainly the business end of the season. The season that the competition comes thick and fast. Um, so if you can get to any of these games and support our, our student athletes, I know they'll appreciate it. Other things on the horizon. Uh, we have obviously the Martin Luther King holiday on Monday. 
Uh, next week, Dr. Scott has already plugged the specialty program information night. We have a family webinar for the rising ninth graders um, on January 24th. And uh, we're not that far away from the end of the second marking period. So I'm, I'm going to go back and stress the importance of good attendance. There's a lot of research supporting students simply show up every day and, and, and bring their A game, do their best work during the school day that, that academically they're going to be more successful over time. So again, thanks to everybody who's contributing to making sure we have um, high attendance across our student population. January 30 uh, is our teacher work day where our teachers uh, wrap up grading assignments and entering grades, work on planning for the coming uh, semester. Uh, obviously, academic advising is ongoing from January to March. And then the deadline for, for transfer applications is February 1 across the school system. So that deadline is rapidly approaching. So there's, there's some things on the horizon. And finally, thank you again for being here. Um, one of our continuous improvement initiatives is to um, commit to um, good communication with our families. Um, this webinar is one of those, uh, one of the measures we're using to try and give um, accurate and timely information for our, our parents to use. Um, if you can use this survey to, to give us some feedback, we appreciate any of your thoughts and comments as we continue to grow and, and, and do even better work over time to support our students and, and families um, who attend Gainesville High School. That's all we have for right now. We'll stick around for a couple of minutes to answer any last uh, Q&A questions. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and posted to our YouTube channel. So if you missed something, you want to rewatch it or share the link with a, a neighbor. Um, it gives a couple of days, but it will go up to our YouTube channel uh, for the rest of the community to see. Again, thanks for your time. Have a good evening.